Well, welcome back to Leaders Fuel Daily. This is episode number 10 of the podcast. And I this has been a great thing for me. I, I, we're 10, 10 uh, conversations in, and every single one I walk away, I feel like I'm a better person when I walk away. And today I'm on with Brenda Baker. She is uh, the owner and purveyor, I suppose, of Authentic Health. And we're going to hear about that in, in a bit. But Brenda, you have certainly been a, a, a very critical person in my own health and my, my own health journey. And I have some questions that I want to ask you about that. But what I want to know is really about your journey because you didn't, what you're doing now, that wasn't your first entrepreneurial venture, was it? So, so just, no, that's you, correct. so thank you, by the way, first of all, thanks so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate that you're doing this. Well, Rick, thanks so much for having me here. And as you said, yes, I've kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit my whole life. Like way before um, there was jazzercise and stuff, I created my own exercise and dance studio. I know I'm giving away my age. I, I have visions of leggings in my head. So yeah, you know, that's right. I'm that's seeing, right. I'm, somehow I'm seeing Jane Fonda and Olivia Newton-John in my mind right now. That was me. <laughs> So anyway, you know, I did that for quite a few years. I choreographed and made up my own. I had my own business back there called Elite Boutique. Nice. And then, you know, time just kind of went on. And I guess some of my biggest accomplishments is um, I was an international top salesperson for Safeguard Business Systems. It was a distributorship that sold business forms. And I was co-owner with my husband. And then I decided I wanted to adopt. And um, that's a crazy story within itself, but it's really how it got me to where I am today. And um, so I adopted, I, I'm the proud mother of two biological children and five adopted. Mm -hmm. um, when we adopted our youngest son, I did my own adoptions. You want to talk about entrepreneurial spirit there. Yeah. You know, I just met a woman and uh, flew to a country where I didn't speak the, the same language or whatever and came home with this gorgeous baby boy. But while I was there, um, you know, God really spoke to me and said that this is what he wanted me to do with my life. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to take this little boy home <laughs> yeah. and be a good mom to him. You know, just ask someone else to do this job for you because it's yeah. not what I want to do. And it was sort of like, you know, you need to stop being so materialistic mm -hmm. and, you know, all about you. And you need to help these children find homes. So um, lo and behold, you know, after I came home to the States with my youngest son, Sasha, um, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't rest. And God yeah. said, you need to go back. This is your mission. Yeah. So I did that for 18 years. So um, I worked all over Eastern Europe, China, and Guatemala. I was fortunate enough to live in these countries for a short period or an extended time. And then one day, um, Sasha and I were living in Guatemala, mm -hmm. and he went to a bilingual mm -hmm. school, and after about two weeks, they said, something's seriously wrong with your son. He can't really read, and he can't really write. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? So he was going to sort of a Montessori school in um, Maryland, okay. but I didn't realize, I guess I was just so busy, Rick, helping parents, helping other people become parents, yeah. that... I neglected, you know, my, my own child with his learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we had him tested and he was severe, uh, dysgraphic and dyslexic, severe ADHD on um, a first grade level at okay. the age of 11. Yeah. So um, we um, actually moved to Greenville then and put him in Camperdown. We moved here for him to go to camp. Okay. Yeah. And his pediatrician said, you know, you need to try some pharmaceutical meds. You've got to help him be able to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, we did that early on when he was younger and it was yeah. a disaster, yeah. but we realized we had to do something. So we put him on some pharmaceutical meds and about a year and a half, two years later, he came home one day and he said, I am not taking these meds anymore. They're killing me and you've got to do something about yeah. it. Yeah. So I went to see my naturopath, who I hadn't seen in about five years, sat in her office and cried for an hour and said, what am I going to do with my life? You know, and she said, have you ever thought about going back to school? And I said, oh, Lord, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, two weeks later, I closed my adoption agency and um, I went back to school. So to become a naturopath and an enzyme nutritionist and a board certified drugless practitioner, board certified alternative medical practitioner, you know, just all of it. Yes. So that I can be where I am today Goodness. in helping people 
with their help. That is, uh, you know, that whole conversation about, um, obviously we're not on here to like talk about pharmaceutical stuff necessarily, but I'll tell you what I find interesting is the number of entrepreneurs who are, are more willing to do what we, what, you know, is called alternative uh, ideas. So, so in other words, Mm -hmm. you know, really there's something in that entrepreneurial spirit that you said, you saw that the traditional pathway that, you know, the majority of people would take with this pharmaceutical uh, intervention to whatever was going on with Sasha, you looked at it and said, this is not working. I have to find something else because this isn't working. I mean, that is to me inherent in being an entrepreneur is that, yeah, you know, you, you, you find yourself at, yourself at moments where you, you realize this is not, whatever I'm doing isn't serving me and there's mm-hmm. gotta be another way. And I think that's part of that entrepreneurial spirit to go, I'm going to go find that way. Exactly. It, it just not being settled with the status quo, I think is a big, mm-hmm. a big part of that dynamic. And it's certainly been a, a, a significant portion of my own life. And, and I think that it has to do with this idea that when you are an entrepreneur, it actually changes the way you look at everything. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, just your, your view of things is, I think you get out of this, you get out of this idea that you're, you're just kind of playing somebody else's game. <laughs> you're just a player in someone else's game. And, mm-hmm. you, and you realize, you know, look, I can, I, I don't have to take the hand I'm dealt. I can throw the cards back to the table and get a new hand. And then you realize, wait a minute, I can be the dealer. (laughs) I don't have to. So I think that idea is in there. Um, And by the way, can I just share something back with you? Uh, When you were telling me that story and I, and I, and I've met Sasha and had you not said everything that you just said, there's no way I would have been able to say, I would have been able to know that that was a part of his life and his own journey. No way. He's pretty remarkable at, you know, at the age of 11, being on a first grade level, every school that we went to, even Camperdown wouldn't take him at first. Every school said he will not make it. Well, he's entering his third year of grad school for oriental medicine and uh, (laughs) acupuncture and in Chinese, herbal medicine in Chinese, you know, he's way smarter. He's He's like my kids, like we, my wife and I were talking the other day, like, what exactly happened? Like somehow God just put our genetics together for us that like our kids are way smarter than we are. I know. And, and I know. You, got, you got Sasha who, I mean, you think about his start in life too. I absolutely love that story. Like we, I, I can, I, I mean, what was it like? Let me ask you this. When you first ever saw him, mm-hmm. describe that, describe the conditions, describe the atmosphere as much as you can. What, what, because obviously we're talking about him today and doing all this stuff. What, when you saw the start of him, when you, what was it like there? Well, you know, this is um, almost 26 years ago Yeah. that, you know, so he was adopted from Latvia Mm -hmm. and about four hours from Riga, which is the capital and doggo pills which is right on the russia line um belarusia line okay yeah. so very still very communist communistic at that time okay. latvia had become free in 90 but they were still under so much russian domain if that yeah. makes sense so i mean it, you go back and you look at dr Zhivago movies and yeah. stuff yeah. We, were, we were actually living that you oh, know my. But when I saw him the first time, you know, oh gosh, I'm not going to get emotional here. But, you know, he was like in a playpen by himself. And I just, you know, squatted down and like put my fingers in and, yeah. you know, just didn't want to scare him, sure. you know. And, you know, within five minutes, you know, he was in my arms and he was just me, you know. And again, I have two biological uh-huh. daughters. Uh-huh. Sasha's more like me than anybody. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like, you know, I'll be like, years ago, I'd be like, so frustrated. I'd be like, I got to get out of this house. No, I got to get out of this country. (laughs) And then you would see Sasha stomping at three. I got to get out of this country. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, yeah. So it was very emotional. And then Rick, to be called to do that work. Yes. Place over 1,600 kids in orphanages. 
And then I, you know, I can't stop there, Miss Entrepreneur here, where I started my own humanitarian drive where we sent like two or three containers to Latvia every uh, year uh, yeah. in October with personal gifts for every child in the orphanage personal gifts yeah. with their name on it. Yes. And I went to toy stores and collected. I had people that were doing adoptions with me in Massachusetts and Texas that would come and help, you know, wrap these presents and put them on a big trailer truck that went to New Jersey to put it on the container. It was a wild ride, <laughs> you know, it was just listening. Yes. So important as an entrepreneur, you got to listen. Yes. What are they saying? You know, yeah. what is my mission? What's yes. my legacy? Exactly. You know, if your legacy is working for someone, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. But when you're being called universe God, you know, yeah. to a higher, higher, a higher thing in your life. Yeah. I think it. a higher expression of who, of who you were meant to be exactly. really. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, yeah. And that is a, such a, major part of this journey and obviously i mean you're speaking my language i love i love that idea and i i love helping people connect with that sense of that purpose Absolutely. And, and have put some together some processes to help people get there but um y- you know and that's and i've learned how critical that is but that thing you just said there about listening i'll tell you kind of where i am right now and it's been it's been very interesting to see the the how, how the people that I've encountered and how these encounters have gone since I started to embrace this, this is probably my 2021, you know, mantra or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that is force less and welcome more because what's interesting to me right now is I, I want to create win-wins. I, I, and I, and when I start thinking about how much I try to force I put so much effort and in not in relationships and in the other things. And, and then when I've learned, just don't try to force things. There is a thread going through your life. There's a purpose of your life. There's a mission of your life. And just, you, you know, listening, as you said, I think when you listen, you get in tune to those things that are for you, those kind of relationships that are going to create a win-win. Absolutely. And, and so I'm just much more interested in that as time goes by of, you said, I love that tune in idea of, of just, and, and by the way, that causes, in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to pause, don't we? We have to slow down and mm-hmm. just stop yes. for a bit. Yeah. I mean, yes. I think to me, and I want to, oh, Obviously, I absolutely love coaching. Coaching flows out of who I am. It's, it is part of my own mission. But um, I think one of the valuable things, among other things, about a coaching relationship is it gives the individual a structured way to put press the pause button in their life. Mm-hmm. And you know, we love it's, it, entrepreneurs, leaders, really are action. We're we're, we're sort of uh, we have a bias towards action. And, and that's good because it's helpful. We, we can't just sit, sit and, you know, be still, or we don't want to get slowed down by sort of the paralysis of analysis, but we also have to stop when we need to think into our business. You know, we have to think into our actions and we also have to think kind of from them a bit where we take time to reflect and think, how did that go? Like, is that the way that I felt? Do I, how do I feel about the way that that went? you know, we learn from life. That's really what I think uh, kind of being a conscious entrepreneur is. I'm I'm part of my training is an experiential education and it's just learning from everything that you do. So I think that I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just talking about the idea of pausing and how important that is to this idea of listening. What do you think? Well, it's really like you're writing your story, writing your book, like Mm -hmm. what chapter are you in? Yeah. And what's the last chapter? And what do you have to do to get there? Again, you know, I don't want to use this word, you know, over and over, but you know, what's your legacy? Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, for I want to encourage people like you do every day, Rick, that if you have a desire, if you have a dream, again, find whomever it is that can help cultivate that for you. Yeah. Right. Completely and agree. just don't give up. Yeah. You know, whatever you do, don't give up. Keep moving forward. 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate that about you. And by the way, look, you moved forward and I have benefited personally. I I have been a recipient of your faithfulness in moving forward in that sort of missional aspect of your life of listening and responding. And that's a key bit of that, isn't it? That you responded because I was thinking, you know, you're in there and in Latvia and you had this, you know, you were what was inspired in you and you know what you were told is i want you to do this for other people look Mm -hmm. around there's more kids here let's come on let's let's get some more kids out and to families where they can be nurtured and loved and cared for and and raised and and um and so I think of it almost like you could have been like Jonah in that moment, like, because you kind of said, you're like, what? <laughs> no way. Exactly. Uh, uh, but you responded, you do, you went and you, and you just said a minute ago, 1600 kids. And, you know, when you think about one of the things we learn when we kind of understand networking is like every person has 200 connections. So when mm-hmm. you put two people together, you're not adding one plus one, you're multiplying, you know, one, two times 200 basically. And, right. um, you know, of course that goes out bigger. I say all that to say it was way more than 1600 people that have been affected by your responsiveness. I think that's, that's really the point. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, thank and you. I appreciate well, you for now that. Seeing, well, now, you know, I've seen over a thousand clients in my natural health practice. So I guess these thousand numbers are <laughs> oh, just keep rolling. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me ask you, I really want to hear about your, what you do. Um, and I want, but let, let me ask you this, just generally speaking, uh, you know, I think the idea, this whole thing is about entrepreneurial empowerment. And I love to talk about conscious leadership and being a conscious mm-hmm. entrepreneur. I, it's, it, it's really, I, it, it put simply, it's a, it's a body, mind, spirit thing. So in other words, mm-hmm. it's your whole self. Everything that you are goes into being an entrepreneur. So mm-hmm. the body bit of that is absolutely critical. So uh, I'd just like to hear your thoughts on just kind of the, the, the importance of your health in being successful as an entrepreneur. Wow. That's a loaded question. It's a big question. I know. I know. (laughs) You know, health is everything. Health is everything. And some people, um, you know, elect to do a Western medicine um, route their whole life. And there's nothing wrong with that. You yeah. know, I mean, um, it's it's really an individual thing. Um, you know, I was, you know, led to do a naturopathic lifestyle for um, my family and for those clients that come to me. Mm-hmm. And through that, um, I just think that being aware and being conscious to know that there are natural uh, ways that you can do things. Yeah, For example, yeah. I, I see a lot of people that come to me that may be on 10, 12, 18 different medications. Mm-hmm. And it started with maybe they had um, acid indigestion. So they took a, um, you know, maybe like Nexium and a proton pump inhibitor mm-hmm. to help with that. Mm-hmm. And then they had side effects from that. So then they had to go on another medication and then they had side effects from that one. So then they got another. Next thing you know, they're on all of these medications. Well, what are the side effects? Just like Sasha, you know, when they put him on that medication, Mm -hmm. he lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, he couldn't eat. He was like a zombie. His other side effects were horrific. And I thought, what kind of mother am I that would pollute my son with that if there's an alternative? If there's another way. Yeah. So being an entrepreneur, it's very important to have a clear mind. Mm. Okay. Because you have to think, you have to be on your toes. You have to be ready for the next great thing that comes your way. Mm -hmm. If you take pharmaceutical medication, that's okay for you. But what if they have side effects? Yeah. You know, what if you're on a medication that causes so much lead pain and you have to be downtown Charlotte meeting all of these people running around, you know, you don't have time to drive everywhere or there's no parking or even downtown Mm -hmm. Greenville. How can you do that if you're on a medication that, you know, causes a a horrific side effect? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, we're, 
or spiritual beings gifted with an intellect living in a physical body. So this is our vessel, right? For everything mm-hmm. that we do. And we're, I, I think it's interesting because we tend to want to kind of segment our lives out and there are ways mm-hmm. that we can do assessments and sort of look at different areas. I think those are fine. They're very mm-hmm. valuable, but you know, one of the things that I talk to people about is you are not actually a segmented being you are one. Mm-hmm. And, and so the idea is getting these things to work in harmony with each other, because people talk a lot about like balance and work life balance. And, and mm-hmm. I say, you know, balance is not really the right word there because mm-hmm. you were, if you were balanced, like you would never move. You, once everything got balanced, you would just stand still. It's more about harmony mm-hmm. and being harmonious. So I would, I think to me, like, if I think about what my aspirations are, what my mission is and what I'm doing, how is my body serving that mission alongside my mind and my spirit? Um, so that but, uh, it's critical to me. I mean, just to, to take care of my body, I guess. Is right. Well, and we only ever have one first impression, right? Uh, that's a good point. So if you're really, you know, working on, you know, coaching and networking and helping people mm-hmm. and you are 200 pounds overweight yeah. or you're suffering with terrible acne or you, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're, you know, can barely walk up the steps. People take notice of that, especially in my profession, you know, like I'm talking health here. And yeah. then I look, you know, if I'm not taking care of my body, yeah. it's just like with networking as an entrepreneur, be the best that you can be in your field. Yeah. So yeah. Other- I want that. Yeah. I want to be a part of that, yeah. right? Even for your health or for your body or for your mind or for your, you know, your your work environment. We have to 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 realize that first impression is is crucial. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, it, it is. And there's so many things that you do and are helpful. You've done a lot of things for me that have, that have been helpful. I, you know, I'd like to say, I'm going to ask you about what you do, but I'm just going to say my own experience. One of the, one of the overarching themes about, you know, is that everything that you did with me was very specific. It was very individualized. It, you, you weren't interacting with me only based on these, you know, larger studies, big ideas, the way that this usually happens. It was, Mm -hmm. and that's what I love about coaching too, is like coaching is what is going on with you right now, right now. Mm -hmm. And that, and I liked the approach when I've come to you is it's, it's very, very specific and very Mm -hmm. individualized. And therefore on the back end of that, the results were, were tailored to me. Uh, Mm -hmm. so that's my, so that's my experience and it's a real thing. That's how, how it's been. So, okay. Uh, your, your business is authentic health is the name of it. So would you share, and you mentioned about being naturopath and so share about what, about your business and about, about what you do. Okay. So basically, I know we, um, we see people that, well, my, my work is more prognosis versus diagnosis. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that um, my job is to help you from not ever having the diagnosis. Mm. Okay. So now a lot of people come to me with di- with a diagnosis. You know, it's a lot of digestive IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, this type of thing. Mm-hmm. And then you know people come with thyroid, gallbladder, weight loss, all of those things across the board. You know, I see people from cold to cancer, but. <clears throat> Then what I do is I do make it very individualized. So I do some testing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one I I would like to say that what I do is the science of nutrition. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're yeah. taking the guess out of it. We're looking at factual data mm-hmm. to be able to say this is where your body is nutritionally, not somebody else. It's not a statistics like you know, let's take um, high cholesterol, what is high and what is low? Well, we're gonna base that off of a group of say 100 people and come out with the average and that's the high, okay? But what we're looking at in natural health is the complete individual person and what's going on with them, like you said now. Yeah, yeah, 
That's so great. the testing, you know, um, I do a lot of, I do what's called a 24 hour biochemical urinalysis mm -hmm. that will show the state of the body. You know, um, if it has toxins in the body, it'll show if the body, you know, can digest fats, mm -hmm. carbs, and protein, but more importantly, can your body absorb it? I mean, we can eat all organic foods. We can do, take the best medicines or supplements, but if our body's not capable of absorbing that, we're just really wasting money. Mm. It'll show the calcium level, it'll show your pH level. And there's a lot of um, chemistry behind that will show again, different um, things that are going on with the, the body. Like if the lymphatic system is congested, the respiratory system. And then I do what's called a, palpita a palpatory test where you come in fasting and I put you on a massage table and I check visceral stress points. They're sort of like acupressure points, okay. but we're going through the body to see how the body reacts when it doesn't have food. Mm -hmm. And then we give you something to drink. It's equal in fats, carbs, and protein. Mm -hmm. Wait till you've digested it. And then we check those points again. So how's the body react when it does have food yeah. and when that it doesn't? Yeah. And we do a couple other things. But one thing, Rick, that I'm super excited about is uh, something I've been wanting to do for about eight years and you just put it out there and then it comes to pass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm doing bioenergetic testing now, which is phenomenal. So this testing is going to scan uh, basically the energy in the body through saliva and hair samples, like energy, like an EKG or an MRI. Okay, yes, so we're right. scanning these things and looking for um, stress and um, the immune system, the digestive system, you know, every organ system within the body, and it will give a graft of where that system is, you know, is it running or operating at 35% or is it operating at 90%, okay? It's going to test um, uh, 600 um, toxins and food sensitivities, okay? How cool is that? And then it will test... Um, uh, hormones. So if your hormones are high or if they're low, and it just does so many more things. And yeah. then it will test herbal products mm -hmm. um, to see what products your body is calling for now. Mm. All right. Yeah. So then we put you on, um, I mean, I'm giving you the very skinny of this. Sure. Then you would, you know, start a remedy for maybe, you know, eight weeks to three months and then test those reps. Um, do another scan, like a remedy scan to make sure those remedies working. are working. Yeah. yeah. It'll also test for like Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme's disease, herpes. So those things are going to come out in the scanning. And so again, it's prognosis. You have it, you may not even know it. So what are we going to do? We're going to help eradicate that from the body mm -hmm. so that you don't come in here three, four years from now with some serious diagnosis. Yes. Yeah. Wow, and 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 how specific and indiv that's incredibly individualistic, and and yes. it's such a different approach, and I, I absolutely love it. And um, it, and what you're describing now is not a process that I've yet done, but it's one that I'll that I'll will be doing. And mm -hmm. uh, but the even the sort of lower level thing that I did with you was very so incredibly helpful and i like that thing that you said and um i always on certain things I, i'm always looking does this work for me mm -hmm. it's not about someone else's experience or you know um is this supposed to work it's does this work for me I've shared some ideas with people of, you know, I'm not a medical person, but I've just shared some things that have been helpful to me. But I usually say that with the caveat, you know, you have to know whether that's going to be helpful for you. I'm not saying I'm not trying to prescribe something. I'm not qualified to do that. But what I think is really interesting is sort of the science behind that that you were just mentioning. And that is there are elements, call them nutrients, whatever it is, that are, that are yes, they are genuine, genuinely helpful. Meaning if mm -hmm. I eat greens, it's better for me than eating French fries. Okay. That, that, well, yeah. unless you have a food sensitivity to those greens. <laughs> yes, that's the point. This is, this is taking the guess out of it. Yeah. And that's the idea is that, and I, I that's uh, th that very interesting little bit. Okay. Yes. Okay. Generally speaking, greens are good for people. Are good. Absolutely. But in your case, 
your and I like that your body isn't absorbing this, meaning the way that another person's body would absorb it, you're not getting that benefits. That's the specificity here that I think is so fascinating Absolutely. because mm-hmm. it's that okay, otherwise it's like, well, what's wrong with you? You're you're not responding to the treatment. Well, mm-hmm. to be able to know very specifically why this isn't working, let's find another alternative that works for you. Honestly, mm-hmm. that if that's on a technically a microscopic level, I suppose, of what happened with Sasha. And that is, hey, look, here's a solution that some people use. Well, in fact, a lot of people use this solution. But guess what? It's not working for Sasha. So let's find another way. Let's find something else. And that mm-hmm. opportunity to do that. Um, and really, that is kind of baked into everything that you're doing now is that, you know, it's well, okay, let's find that match for what's the best for you. What's going to mm-hmm. give you the optimal health? And- well, and a lot of people don't really know that it's out there. You know, when, not to go back to adoption work, but when I was working in adoption and traveling, you know, I'd be in Russia and maybe have an upset stomach or food poisoning or something. And they would say, here, take this herb. And I'd be like, herb? Why would I want to take a herb? We take pills in the yeah, U.S. You know? yeah, a pill for the, the yeah. And then when I told them, you know, what, 15 years later that I was going to school to become a naturopath, they just laughed hysterically. They went, they could not believe it because I was... I was just like, I'm not going to wait for herb to work, you know, and now to see, you know, the power in, 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 um, you know, homeopathics and enzymes, it's, it's, it's out there. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, That's great. So uh, let me, uh, let me ask you this thing too. Uh, You're obviously, you and I are in Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, well, first of all, uh, up until now, up until this point, how far have people traveled to see you? From from what distance? Oh, well, um, Texas, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lot of clients in Florida and New York, mm-hmm. um, Massachusetts, kind of all over. Mm-hmm. But they don't really have to come here if they don't want to. A lot of times people maybe knew me from adoption work or something or or traveling through and heard about me, but I can do virtual work. And so that's, you know, especially with the the bioengineering scanning and the urinalysis, Mm -hmm. you know, that's something that they're doing in their home anyway. And then once I get the reports, um, you know, get the information back, um, then I type up a report and go over with them and then um, be able to help them select the remedy that would best suit them instead of going online and guessing, you know, how many times, especially through the pandemic, you know, we're bored, we're, you know, surfing the net and, Oh, take this great amino acid. You're just going to cure everything. You know, first of all, you don't know who made it. You don't know where it came from. And so you, we just keep buying things because we're bored. You know, we think, Oh, we're going to get so healthy taking all this. And we spend all this money all this money and it wasn't even really good for our system or we're taking so much protein and our body can't digest protein and it's making us sick. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Well, well, so you answered my second question, by the way. So my first question was how far away do people come? They've come to you from long distances, but they don't have to be there to get the benefits of working with you people. You can do remote and virtual work. So that's good, good to know because, you know, potentially someone could see this or hear it and not be in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But you know, what we're going to do is we're going to anywhere this goes out, I'm going to make sure that people have a way to get a hold of you, get in touch with you, uh, you know, have your bio in, 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 in it. And uh, so that there's, you know, anyone that has a need uh, can find a way to reach you. So well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so is there anything that we've left unsaid that we need to share as a part of this? Any, any, any other question that maybe I should have asked you along the way and uh, before we wrap up here? Well, I guess, you know, basically in closing, you know, I mean, if we look at it, you know, health is very simple. Our body will tell us everything we need to know about it. We just need to learn to listen to it. Mm. And when our body speaks to us, do something about it. The problem is, is we tend to ignore our bodies when it speaks to us. Mm. We put our head down and we barrel through life. 
And then one day we wake up 20, 30, 40 years later, diagnosed with one or multiple chronic diseases, shocked and wondering, how did this happen? When our body's been kicking and screaming the whole way there. I mean, where is it written in stone that in order for us to die, we have to be plagued with these chronic diseases, yeah. suffer with pain daily, have limited function? Why can't we just listen? And then one day, you know, at the ripe age of 100, 110, our light just flickers out. I mean, that's a better scenario for me. What about you? Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, I'd rather be a goldie oldie than a moldy oldie, right? <laughs> so the take home message that I could leave is again, mm. you know, health, there's no substitute for good health. Mm. And my purpose is to educate, inspire, and empower as many people as I can to get well and stay well naturally. I mean, everybody deserves to live a completely disease free life. Right. Completely agree. Completely yeah. agree. Wow. Uh, that was so wonderful. Thank you very much for being a part Thank of you, this. Rick. And, uh, and I look forward to uh, continued good health and working with you. And I just appreciate you very much. Thank you, Rick. And thanks for what you're doing for all the entrepreneurs out there. <laughs> Have a great day. All right. Bye for now.